one of the examples that he talked to me about was in Colorado where he went down into granite and so they're they're blasting down into granite and suddenly they came to a cavity that shouldn't have been there so they went down to explore what was going on what this cavity was and it turned out to have in it a UFO and uh, an alien body now this had occurred so long ago that there was actually like quartz that had formed over the ship and the alien's body. This was the first clue that he had that aliens had been here living in the earth for probably millions of years. When we think about being invaded by aliens, forget it. They're already here and they have been here. They've been a part of our life since the beginning. The second time he, he told say, me... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, the second time he told me about the alien contact was through the deep underground mountain bases with the Dulce, New Mexico. Right, and, the Dulce firefight. Right, the firefight. And he, he told me about that, how the men came down. And to me, the number was like 21 people originally went down. He Again, they're blasting holes, and suddenly they discover that there's a cavern already there. So they go down and explore what's going on there. And they find um, lizard aliens, dracos is what he would call them. So they're big, tall, reptilian looking. Yeah, they der derive one of their happy drugs from us. So when they frighten us and we get the adrenaline going, yeah. Um, that's like a drug to them. But then they eat our blood. Really? Yeah, they eat it. Yeah, they want our blood, and they they eat our body parts. There was this Is big that giant bat. Certain one. Well, it sounded like the reptilian ones specifically were doing this, and the greys help them get people. So the greys help abduct people, usually children. You know, there's a million children that disappear every day, I mean every year in the United States. A million every year. But we, we only hear about a couple of. He said there were seven types of aliens. And out of those, two were friendly that actually tried to help us. One of them looks very similar to us. They, they're a little larger. Did he say what but they were called? He said they were from the Pleiades. Oh, the Pleiades. So the, okay. the aliens that were from the Pleiades looked more like us and were more friendly to us. You know that reptilians and, and Draco, uh, you know, the blood sacrifices, the whole Luciferian thing, the, the kids being killed and eaten, I mean, that humans have been eaten and taken off planet, et cetera, et cetera, and used for slaves in other colonies, et cetera. I hate to say that, but that's far worse than what you've just said. It's okay. far worse. Yes, far worse. Far worse uh, yeah. And uh, that the whole blood situation uh, is uh, it's unbelievable. And um, right. I don't know how we say that to the public. I, I don't know how. Uh, to me, if we get into that, and I know all about it, okay? All right. Far more than you know, sure, all right? I'm sure. <laughs> when we get into that, if we release it, 70, 80 percent of everybody that listens to your program is going to say, you're smoking pot. I don't believe that. And I don't believe anything you people talk about on extraterrestrial. And it's going to kill what disclosure is trying to do. That's but my you opinion. you know the pedophilia is starting to be exposed everywhere. You know that much is yeah. coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know the part that I don't want to talk about. I hear you. Okay? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it, saying as much as you said right now is actually great. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Because you basically are, anyone who's hearing everything else you say is going to have to come to home with this. And if they want to know more, it's out there. It's more and more, it's out there. Yeah. Now, uh, 
I'm not going to speak for Bob, but Bob Wood, Dr. Wood, who's worked with me on the my book, okay, yes. he's, he's a genius. Uh, if we were in the conference room and we were talking and there was a big table there, he would have his fist like this and he would slam that table. I want every GD thing exposed. I want it all Good out. Good for him. Uh, That's lovely to hear. And I have to say, I'm having a hard time disagreeing with him, but... Well, I, we can do another interview on that subject so that, you know, this one, it goes out. Because I know you really want this information out. You want people to start to wake up. And we don't want to turn them off to any... We don't want... You just said degree. it. We don't want them to be turned off. We don't want them to not believe what's being said. Okay, know, and this yeah, it's, and some we can get into it partially, but I'm saying uh, I ter yeah. personally don't want to be involved in doing what Bob wants to do. It, it's too heavy. All I right. think it's going to I think it's going to really hurt getting more people to get involved in this subject. Okay, they're going to say. Bill Tompkins is smoking pot. I don't believe one damn word. I don't want to hear about any of this. Okay? Yeah. I don't want to hear about it. My, my philosophy on this, which is humans are not protecting themselves. They're not protected. And so if you don't warn them, you're culpable. The next time somebody gets snatched yeah. and eaten or taken away or their child, and it's, I'm more concerned by the, about the children, obviously, than, than anything else. That's... Um, you know that's it well, that's what and so I you know that's my statement my statement is you know I care about the children and I want to protect the children how can you protect a child you must tell them you must tell their parents what's happening what's really going on on this planet and it's about time we humans are able to protect ourselves you yeah. know there's a lot of new agers out there who want nothing but to believe that there's ETs definitely but they're all hearts and flowers and good guys mm -hmm. Yes. And this is this is such a dangerous thing to put out there because again you get humans that will not be able to protect themselves That's and correct. also not understand. You know, some people get the wrong idea about Camelot, but I'm actually in favor of the military. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but I actually understand that we have a lot of military that are putting their lines lives on the line. Yes. In a daily basis to protect humans that have absolutely no idea that they're in danger. You're correct. Absolutely. And, I agree. It, and that's got to change. Yeah, it's got to change. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I and I, I realize that people have no idea what a brave man you are. Oh. You are, I mean, no, I just, I just wanted the statement made on my interview here that the courage that it takes to actually do what you're doing right now is phenomenal. Really, it is. See, I can get away with this because I'm a journalist and I can say anything and people will say, she's crazy and just not listen. But someone with your stature, you know, with your reputation and your documentation and who you, where you were and how, where you come from and all of that, um, this is substantial. I don't think people can ignore you. I don't think they can. Well, I, I sure hope they don't. Uh, and uh, because, frankly, we need help. Yeah. We need everybody involved in this. It's, it's not, that's not a lie. We need help. Yes. The Navy had been involved with uh, the, the German facilities in Antarctica and the Draco reptilian facilities in caverns in the Antarctica. And you have Draco uh, reptilian guys running your governments right. of every country on your planet. Of I every mean, government. There you go. Wow. That's quite a statement. I mean, Does that answer your question? Does that answer <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not what we want to hear. No. When we got to the moon, we found out a lot of surprises, okay? <clears throat> the Draco reptilians were already there. And we, we, we knew because we had probes when we went 
non-manned probes that we sent around the moon. So we knew there were facility on the backside. We knew a whole lot that people didn't talk about. But we were in a position where uh, this moon is not a moon, okay? It's not your moon in the first place. Actually, this is not your planet. Uh, this is their laboratory, okay? Right. Okay, uh, the Dracos, you mean, or the reptilians? Draco, both? reptilian, slash okay. reptilian. And I'm going to ask you what they all look like and all that, you know, at some point. Uh, okay. Because um, I know, okay, let's let's get to when it was, uh, was it Neil Armstrong landed on the moon and he said he said that thing that you heard him say, and Michael wants to get real specific about this. So basically, there were seven huge craft there, and you said on one of the shows out there, you said um, that the, the reptilians actually showed up be, beneath their craft and they gave the finger. Okay, they were parked around the side of the, uh, the crater. crater. Yeah. Okay, they were not parked on it; they were right. floating above it. Okay, yeah. So. There were hundreds of these nine-foot reptilian guys standing with their legs. Hundreds. Yeah, they were all the way across the, uh, the wow. under, uh, underneath their vehicles, okay, standing so on the crater. Feet, and what do they look like? Uh, uh, they're ugly-looking uh, lizard, alligator-type people. They wow. got. They got the same skin as the lizards got, right. okay? And terrible looking faces. Mm. But then they have the ability to shift and look like a human. All of them do, okay? Okay, do you think Von Braun was a, a reptilian? No. You really don't? No. Okay. Uh, your president, yes. Oh. What? Which one? Uh, George Bush, Senior? Yes. Yeah. Sure. And, and Bill Clinton, and this guy you got. Oh. Just Obama. got rid of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they all were. Right. Okay. So, and they all have this ability to make themselves look like real uh, good-looking people. And you're saying Trump does isn't one. No, he's not. Okay. Well, that's a relief. And. Uh, <laughs> And he knows more about this subject than people realize. It. Oh, okay. excellent. Uh, Join the fight against the reptilians and dracos that are basically plundering the galaxies, um, taking over planets, etc. And you've said something very similar to that. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Uh, I'm just saying that this, this is our, our situation. And I guess I, we should wrap this up. And I want to say thank you very much. I love much. you. Love you. Love you, and okay. thank you for your yeah. service to humanity. Okay. okay, appreciate it. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart and the top of my heart. Do you know of any stories that tell connections between non-humans and Mormons? Well, um, there's a lot of strange stuff that goes on underneath the Mormon temple and nearby the Mormon temple. The Mormon temple, of course, is right in the heart of Salt Lake and it has sub-basements upon sub-basements upon sub-basements. We've been in some of them. And um, it's uh, been reported that uh, right across, well, it's not been reported as a fact, that right across from the Mormon Temple is the downtown urban mall. Uh, I forget the name of it. And in the basement of the mall, numerous times the cleaning people have seen large reptilian figures walking on two legs, scurrying through the, scurrying through the basement of the mall. Um, also, um, one of the temples, actually the Seattle Bellevue Washington Temple, when it was being built, some Christian colleagues of mine snuck into the found when they were building the foundation of the temple and put Bibles underneath the the, pi the main pylons of the temple. And uh, they also put a little booklet called To Moroni with Love, which was one of the first and best anti-Mormon books ever written. 
and then they poured the concrete over the temple. So we, we used to joke about the fact that, that that temple was the only Mormon temple that was built on the Word of God. Then, you see, you got to realize the temple dedication is a huge deal. The Mormon prophet himself flies in and prays this dedicatory prayer over the temple. And while he was doing that up on the hill overlooking the temple, there's all these pine trees. And hiding behind the pine trees were a dozen believers in Yeshua praying fiercely against the lying and deceitful spirits of Mormonism. So guess what happens? We found out later from several people who got born again that when people would go in... See, the Mormons believe that, that Almighty God himself walks in those temples. That's why they're so sacred. They believe that he's actually walking through the corridors, that he, he stays in the celestial room and visits his children that are there. And, you know, on and on and on. And many people in Mormon temples have experiences where they see dead ancestors. Like they'll go in and be baptized for their dead grandmother or something, and then they'll see old granny hovering up there in the ceiling saying, oh, thank you for finally, you know, baptizing me so I can join the one true church, you know, that kind of thing. And of course, all of these are demons. Well, so what was interesting about this Bellevue Temple is that people would start seeing these horrible crocodile, reptilian-like figures running through the hallways. Hmm. And it freaked several people out to the point they got born again. And what we believe is that the prayers uh, and the, the presence of the Bibles underneath the foundation was sort of scrambling these, you know, reptilians and demons or whatever they were from appearing as these benign relatives or as Heavenly Father or whatever. And so instead... The masks were being ripped off and they were being seen for what they really were. Say, I have seen that you don't. I have smelt them. I have, I have had personal experience of these. And there are people who claim that these creatures are gods. There are people, say, who claim that these creatures are experimenting on us. That is a lot of rubbish. These creatures are harvesting us. These creatures are not aliens, Mr. Ike. These creatures are sexually compatible with our women. And what does that tell you? It tells you that they came from here. They are, they are, they are part of us. And this makes them all the more dangerous. They know us very, very, very well. They know the great weaknesses of our minds, just as they know the great strengths of our minds. They operate in, in what I call the gray area of human existence, that, that side of our lives which we don't want to acknowledge the existence of. They create, African tradition says that the Chitaul, where, where, where they engaged God himself in a terrible war, and God defeated them, the real God, Nkudungulu, the creator. God defeated them, and he closed their mouths so that they are unable to talk or to eat food anymore. But we are told, say, that the Chitawuli fatten on the energy that we human beings give them. They make us to fight each other. And when the whole land is drowning in death and fear and terror, when hundreds and hundreds of people are angry and afraid, the cheetah will get fat because they eat that, that what we call the dark power, which is brought about when human beings destroy the planet on which they live. They feed off human emotions. Yes, sir. Very, very intense 
human emotion. For we are told, for example, that if you see a chitawuri walking through the bush or just standing there and looking at you, and you are accompanied by your wife or your girlfriend, you must immediately make love to that girlfriend and release as much emotion as possible, and the chitawuri will be pleased and will walk away from you and not harm you. And another thing, sir, we are told that the chitawuri eat energy which is generated when hundreds of human minds or one human mind starts thinking at certain levels. We are told that the Chitauri want us to think at certain levels. Certain wavelengths. Yes, sir. And they reward us with long life. May I ask you, sir, have you ever thought as a thinking person, why is it that in the great universities of this world you find professors who think at certain levels and who live unnaturally long lives? Albert Einstein, Raymond Dart, Robert Broom, all of these professors live a long, long time. And my aunt mine, the last Sanusi in South Africa other than myself, is as active as a young girl and yet she is close to her 99th year of life. My stepmother, Rose, she has lost nearly all his, her children, and she is still alive. Extreme longevity is the reward with which the Chitauri reward. Uh, in a previous interview, Barry, you mentioned seeing a lizard-like creature at Peasmore. Would you uh, tell us more about that? Yeah, on one occasion, it was just a, a single occasion, I was in the main corridor at the base and coming out of the room, along the main corridor was this very large creature, very tall, well over six foot, um, being accompanied by two uh, men in suits, which I took to be NSA operatives, they're the only ones who don't wear badges in the place. Uh, I just stopped in my tracks very, very uh, shaken, I mean, it's a very powerful looking uh, being, very difficult to describe, just very, very tall, very well built, very strong, well over, as I say, well over six feet, it must have towered at least a foot over my my head, uh, a greeny, browny, mottled uh, type of skin, I tried to take in as many details as possible, but as I say, it literally caught me unaware as I was really put into shock. Didn't know what the hell it was, it was just casually walking along the main corridor with the two operatives. Got a very strong sense of evil and nastiness about the thing. Um, it worried me for quite a while afterwards. I mean, you know, you're never told. The security people are last to be told what's going on. But it was inferred by others at the time that that was one of the reptile species because it didn't mean that much to me at the time. But every time you ask questions, no one wanted to answer. It was just strongly inferred that, yeah, that was a reptilian. You don't want to mess with that. And it was just left at that. But over the years, it's, it just seems more and more plausible to me that that also was another creation from the base. It just, you know, there, there may well be reptilian races, but it's just as easy for the military to have actually made this thing, rather than it being an action. Like the thing. rest of them? Like the rest of them, yeah. It, 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 I sit more happier with that, that, yeah, that was actually made, rather than an actual species, yeah. That yeah, it was a program generated live for him. I'm pretty certain it was, yeah, yeah. Uh, did he make sounds or say anything? 
No, it never looked at me. It just continued walking. There was no interaction whatsoever. Um, I, on, I only got some interaction from the two guys who that I'm standing there, mouth wide open, gaping at this, and I just got the look from them, just a, you know. And they just continued, and I continued about my business. No, there's no sound, uh, no speaking, no nothing whatsoever. It was just walking along the main corridor with the two guys. That was it. Did you have any idea what his function was? Um... Well, again, you ask as many questions as, as you formulate afterwards once you've got over the initial shock of what the hell was that. No one wanted to know. Uh, no one wanted to easily give answers to questions. It was a case of, well, you saw it, that was it. You know, don't ask questions. Troublemakers ask questions and they don't want that. He was walking on two feet, was he, or four feet? or Two, yeah. Two so, well, he's standing upright. I mean, as I say, I'm trying to take in. This all happened probably within 30 seconds. I'm taking it in, uh, feeling, you know, whew, yeah, I don't want to meet this on a dark night anywhere. Um, yeah, I never even bothered to look back. It was, well, the glance back I gave both the, the, the figure and the two, two guys was, was very brief. While I continued, that's it. I've got jobs to do. I'm away. That's not my business. But over a period of time, you were there for upwards of a year or so altogether. Why did this one bit of 30 seconds, rather this brief... Because it was so out of place with what was going on there. I mean, everyone's so used to the, the three different phases you know, of development of the PGs, and this literally stuck out like a sore thumb. You know, it's just not the usual thing you see around. It was just the once, once only. Um, yeah, it was very unnerving, very scary. Any final questions? You didn't see an insignia or anything on his clothing. I mean, he was dressed in some um, presumably. If it was, again, I never noticed. Uh, I didn't discern, you know, oh, that was skin and that was clothing. It, it, that just didn't, that wasn't there. It was just this tall being. I mean, mostly my focus was from, you know, chest upwards. I mean, the head, you know. Was, yeah. I was literally expecting it to turn around and face me. Then I wouldn't know what I would have done if it had a done, but it just kept looking straight and continuing, as if I wasn't even there. So, no, I didn't take in that many details. Uh, what I saw was, yeah, quite enough, thanks very much. Is there anything that you could, that you could say it looked like? Uh, well, again, you've seen drawings that people have done over the years of supposed uh, reptilians, dracos, whatever they, you know, the, the names are given. It lizard-like. I mean, it li literally is like a very tall, very big lizard. I mean, you know, I was half expecting the big forked tongue to come out, but you know, again, it's just what you expect, what you're programmed to expect a, a lizard-type being to be like. Any idea why they would create such a creature? Well, it's exactly the same. Not the, the the normal, if you can call them that, PGs. I mean, they're there for military abductions. Um, there's a, a, an awe of mystery over the reptilians. They're the dangerous ones. They're the ones who are in charge. Uh, they're just continuing that. Yeah. Anything, finally, that you would like to say to um, the C-SETI group? Well, as I Any mentioned... word of advice? Or? Well, there is. I mean, there's, there's insiders out there who probably know a hell of a lot more than I'll ever know. And there's a lot of people out there who want to come forward. Just give them the reassurances that they'll be listened to without being laughed at, they'll come forward. Can you help in that regard? Well, it's limited to what I can personally do. I mean, I can only help with people over on this side of the Atlantic, and I know there's a Absolutely, load of people yeah, locally, yeah. Yeah, who are involved. And by making my documents known, they know that I was involved, it might make them a little bit safer in coming forward. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We certainly appreciate your time and efforts. Okay. This is David Daniels. This is how he appeared um, to me on my doorstep um, when he said that he'd, ca he'd come down in a craft and he'd been told to come um, to mine to, to meet me and give me knowledge. Yeah. And he stayed with us for three months, and while he was staying with us, I saw him turn into a reptilian um, three different times. What and did you feel about this at the time? I didn't. I didn't feel anything. I felt um, friendly with him. He was really nice. Um, you know, we, we really gelled together, and he learnt, gave me a lot of knowledge. He could 
read any UFO book that um, I put in front of him. He knew exactly what was in the book. He didn't have to open it to read it. He could appear and disappear. He only ate green vegetables and sweets. He didn't eat anything else. He started to stay in the house because we had to put you up in right, here. Well, before you go into this, if you go through the rest of the uh, pictures. Oh, okay. <clears throat> David Daniel was a reptilian, that's how he sort of changed. How, what was the mechanism in changing, what was it like? He shook for about two minutes, he just absolutely shook before his face started taking over and then his body, but I didn't actually see his full body, not until the third, well then I didn't see his full body, I just saw his face and his arms, his hands and his chest on the third one. Um, people say to me, did he have a tail, but he, you know, as far as I know he didn't, because I didn't see the full, um, full thing. So it's sort of a shuddering blur? Yeah, it sort of shut, you know, when he was going to change, he sort of shook. And, and did he do um, that intentionally? Well, I guess it's the way he, he morphomized from, from being um, human to being a reptilian. Um, you know, because when I saw the little ones, and I used to play with the little ones when I was five, they the used little, to do the, the same little, things. The little, the Sorry, I call them the little ones. No, the little ETs. Um, yeah, when I used to play with them when I was five, down in the dell, yeah. um, they used to do the same thing. They used to shake like jelly, and I used to call them my little jelly friends. Um, Is that because they were changing shape to humans? or in No, it's because the, the way they materialised and dematerialised. And it's the same with the little monks down at Rendlesham. They done exactly the same thing. They used to shake, um, you know, when they when they materialised in front of us, and then when they dematerialised, they used to sort of shake like that, and there was a glow come off them, and they would just go. It's really hard to explain, but um, that's the way. Okay, I, it's I more the, uh, you know, of David. No, um, only his. Um, only his. Um, this is what he wore round his neck. So he wore on the it round right hand side neck. is David, no? No, no. That's, that's nothing to do with David. Okay, right. No, that to do with Ra. But that's when he took me back um, to my past lives. He done something with that in front of me like that and he was putting it in front of me and told me to watch it and I was watching it and he took me back to some of my past lives. And what were they? Your past One was I was a man in Egypt and I helped to build the pyramids and I described exactly how I helped to build the pyramids and one day, oh, years after that, um, probably in the 90s, I went up to um, Norwich Museum and they were doing Egyptian day and the funny thing was there, they had pictures of how the pyramids were built and that was exactly how I'd explained it, absolutely exactly. And another one, I was a monk in Peru, or I was a Buddha actually in Peru, and I was looking down, going up to the big um, palace or wherever it was we were going, up this hill, looking down in a valley and you could see all the people who were really poor and everything and they were trying to grow their crops and that. Um, and then another time, I don't know what era I was in because um, there was a little boy and he was pulling a like an oxen and a cart with all grain and that in it across some cobblestones and I was standing there watching him in a long grey dress but I don't know unless it was Tom Sawyer's day I don't know what what year that was or where but they was. were all in a human environment as opposed to an alien environment yeah they're all in it. yes yeah they were yeah all my past lives yeah so who 